Well, guys, awesome for coming back on. I know we're going to lose some people, and I apologize for that. It's too bad because it's a good message. We're, I see everybody popping back on. We'll give you guys just like a couple more seconds here, and then we'll get rolling. Like I said, this is a, a very timely message, so hearing this on Thursday probably won't serve you as much. But um, better than that. Excellent. I see Janice and Randy and Raphael. So, uh, give me a sound check. Saying it's good. That is awesome. Thank you. Get a little zoomed in here. Wow, that's a powerful zoom. That's cool. Nice. And we're loading right back up. All right, we'll get rolling here. So, uh, audio sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, for some reason, we could not get to connect, and Emily had the smart idea. Let's kill the whole thing and get go to to reset everything, and apparently it worked. Funny, technology, but we're big into technology. So, <laughs> nice hat. Well, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, so, as I was saying to myself, when you guys couldn't hear, hear me, this presentation took a little turn. Um, really, earlier today, I was going to go through some different stuff with you, but given that we're in a very unique time right now in our lives that is um, un un unseen or unheard of historically in the past in, a, in, in an election that is unlike any other, right? I wanted to speak to to you all um, on, on equal grounds, if you will, meaning that um, I want us to put a, put aside any prejudgment and uh, just open our minds for a moment, okay? Because we have a lot of closed-minded people, probably like 99% of the people out there are closed-minded right now. They fall on one side or the other. There's no discussion, no intellectual um, brain powers being shared in between, just closed-minded, all in or all out. And that's it. Um, this is not a polit political rant, um, so do not um, take it that way, okay? The world right now, particularly in our country, is starving, starving for leadership, starving for leadership, right? In my mind, leadership resolve comes out of entrepreneurs, right? Because we know what it takes to, to survive. We know what it takes to get up when we get knocked down. We know how to walk through life with thick skin and not be freaking emotionally thrown every time somebody says something to us or about us. We're bigger than this, right? But not everybody is. I'm not judging them. That's cool, right? doesn't mean that the world still doesn't need us right now. So I want to share some thoughts with you on true leadership, okay? I also want to challenge you today, tomorrow, and in, in the, the vacuum of time that's going to be created over the next few weeks post-election, that regardless of who wins, regardless of who wins, understand that the third candidate is the one you should be putting your money on. The third candidate is the only one <clears throat> that can directly change your tomorrow. The third candidate is the only one that you can control to influence others in a positive, persuasive way. The third candidate is the only one that deserves your attention, your focus, the only one that will be loyal to you, is the only one that you can trust. That third candidate is you. The outcome of the elections are probably going to be historic, no doubt. The outcome of the elections are going to have a forever, lifetime ripple effect, no doubt. Still going to make a difference. The third candidate is one that deserves our attention. And then every ounce of energy, particularly negative energy, that is focused on either of the other two candidates takes it directly away from the third. Do know that. Every time we take the eyes off of us and put them on them, and we put them on them in such a way that it's a negative energy, it's not a positive energy, there's not excitement and hope and positivity flowing around it. There's just vice and despise and quite honestly hate and vindictiveness. That's all that's all negative. That does not serve us, does not serve those around you, does not make this world a better place. So I want to share with you what I wrote down about a half an hour ago. Some thoughts that uh are going to be my guiding light. I figure, wow, this might be worth sharing with you. 
I titled it Leadership versus Loudmouth. So you see it's very quick. Can't see it, but that's it. Okay. I put together five thoughts, if you will. Five. <laughs> Marks this. Gary Johnson. Raph, yeah, video it says video small cannot change. I don't know. I can't change it on my side either. Maybe it can. I don't know. Hold on. Let me click a button. Wow. Just got full screen on mine. On mine. <laughs> I guess I can change it. I don't know if that makes it any bigger on yours, but it just got ginormous on my side. It's kind of cool. So anyways, leadership versus loudmouth. A lot of loudmouths out there. I'm not, I'm not judging, okay? Um, whatever, man. Everybody spends their life the way they want to spend their life. That's up to them. I'm sharing with you, okay, a couple thoughts on how we can collectively make this world a better place. Fair enough? So, Pat, what about the election? What about your thoughts? I'll just put that behind this conversation right now. There is no candidate of the two that I stand wholly behind. As a matter of fact, um, I stand behind neither of them, even up to 50% mark. Well, I vote for one, of course, right? That just means I hate one less, and I want to use the word hate. It's not that it's not hate, right? But I think less of one, and I think less of the other, if that makes any sense. But the challenge here, the challenge here, right, is it's basically 50-50, give, give or take a point, which means you're going to have 50% of our society not happy after tomorrow. And the bigger challenge is of those 50%, very few of them really like their candidate. They just like them slightly more than the other one. So the point is, let's embrace it. It ain't about the candidates. It's about us. You and I are not enemies. If there was an enemy, we'd be united to stand against it. The numbers would support that more of us are like than unlike. It's not 50-50. Okay? Who should be on, on one side? Who should be on the other? Should be all of us over here, and the behemoth government on the other side. And whoever, whoever becomes president of the two, we should unite together and start demanding higher standards of them. Not fighting against each other, but uniting together. Whomever the president is, because they're going to represent our country. They're supposed to represent all of us. We should stand together and demand of them to do that. Let me share with these without getting too far off on that one note there. Five things here, okay? Number one, leaders must be able to communicate. And yes, we are all leaders. There's somebody watching us all the time. You have a message. But you must be able to communicate, and it's impossible to communicate a message when you're attacking the other side. You can't tell them they're wrong and expect them to be open to your message. Communication is one of the most brilliant skills there are. And the biggest flaw, the biggest mistake I see in communication is when we actually falsely believe that one actually took place. Meaning that the other person received openly our message. When you come in and say, hey Pat, you're an absolute idiot for the way you think, and here's the way I think, and you should think that way too. You think I'm open to hear anything that you have to say, and the answer is no. So why are you wasting your time? And are you really, are you really trying to make this better, or are you just trying to be right? Understand what I'm saying? You know, when the going is great, and things are fine, leaders leave from behind. They disappear. They pick up the loose ends. They let everybody else take the credit. But when the going gets tough, when there's blood to be shed, when there's bruises to be had, right? leaders go right out in front, man. They go first. Leaders got to be able to communicate their message, which means they've got to be open-minded to the idea that other people have different thoughts and views, and they're not wrong. They're just different. In order for me to open up your mind to my message, I've got to first be open to yours. And my unwillingness to open my mind will for certain close down yours. And my ability to communicate a message 
will be immediately erased. So I am sure you can already see how our so-called leaders really fail in their ability to communicate their message. Right? That's number one. Number two, once you have a message, whatever it may be, stop trying to tell everyone what it is and how you go about doing it. Nobody wants to know that. They don't stand behind what and how. When you have a message, tell them why you have the message. Why you want to do what you want to do. What's the bigger purpose? What's the bigger cause here? People respond to why. They don't respond to what and how. Everybody tells you how to do it and what to do. Nobody shares why they do what they do. That's how you transfer a cause. That's how Martin Luther King Jr. did it. That's how we got all those people out to show up, up on the, out on the green, over a quarter million people, without email, without you know TV stations and, and news stations and radio and webinars and everything else. People just showed up because as the message spread, it wasn't what and how, it's the why he was who he was. And people, when they can take a why and make it their own why. Now what I'm telling you about showing up on this green for this talk that Martin Luther King is doing, I'm telling you because it's my cause now too. I can stand behind the why when it's clearly expressed to me. The what and how is somebody else's, but the why can be mine as well. So once you have a message and you're able to open your mind to hear other people's viewpoints, not condemn them, so that you can open their mind to hear yours, once you have number one done, number two is to, as you're spreading the message, don't focus on the how you're doing it and what to do, what you're doing, focus on the why you're doing it. The why is what, what, what creates a cause, purpose, behind what you're doing. Number three, this is a big one. Do what you say and say as you do. Stop with the hypocrisy. When you think about it, of all the national leaders that you know of, how many of them don't wallow in hypocrisy? And it's very hard to stand behind the leader, to believe in a leader that doesn't believe in their own message, that doesn't do what they say. You also call this integrity. Do what you say and say what you do. Are you the kind of person that somebody can count on your word? If you say it, it will be done. You don't need a contract. You don't need it in writing. My word is my, my word is my word. You don't need anything else. That's a leader people can stand behind. See, that's a leader that gives people confidence. Now they know no matter what you say, at least they know where you stand and what to expect from you. You're not going to say one thing to this group, another one to this group. Say one thing over here, and then when it serves you better, you do something differently over here. That's hypocrisy. Very difficult to stand behind. Very difficult to create any level of security. And in times of chaos, which we're getting hard into right now, people seek security. They seek security in strong leadership. They find in people who are strong to their word, who do what they say and say what they do. Now I can make a judgment. Even though I don't believe wholly in what you're saying, at least I know where you're coming from. I know what to expect. Guess what? You've taken most of the fear out of the equation. The fear of the unknown that leaves people very uneasy. That's why I have such an unstable environment right now. That's why people are falling prey to everything. Any little message out there, uh, people bite on. People are emotionally weak right now. They need strong leaders. You know, the greatest opportunity for leaders to rise is in a state of chaos, a time of fear, a time of division. The ability to unite people. That creates a level of security. Amongst so much division that we're going through right now. So number one, right? Communicate your message. But be open to hear different opinions and different viewpoints. Don't condemn because they're different. Just accept that they're different. They're not right. They're not wrong. 
They're different just like yours. Number two, communicate your why. Don't just communicate how you do and why, how, how and what you do. Communicate why you do what you do. Next, be a person of your word, a man, woman of your word. Don't do one thing and say another. Don't say one thing to one group to get their favor and another to another group over here to get their favor. You know, you do that once, you can lose all credibility. Stop with the hypocrisy. People look for certainty when there's a state of chaos. It rises very high to the pile of human needs and needs to be filled. This is a great opportunity to step up as a leader. Businesses grow because people stand behind leaders. You want a strong business? Be a strong leader. Don't give me this, oh, you're born a leader. It's not true. Leadership is learned. You're learning it right now. Leadership is practiced. Leadership is perfected over time. A big part of leadership starts with self-mastery, self-leadership. And a lot of these are kind of splintered in here, hypocrisy being one of them. Are you a person of integrity? Do you do what you say? Do you do what you say? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Do you tell your kids one thing and then don't do it? Do you tell them just to appease them and later you don't do it because it's inconvenient. That would be out of integrity as an example. Right? Fourth, this is a big one, okay? Constantly strive to raise people up. If what you're about to say does not bring people up, don't say it. If what you're about to share isn't there to elevate everyone, don't share it. Stop trying to be right. Our desire to be right means others have to be wrong. That's our intention. That's not rising people up together. Look at it as being the tide. Tide rises, the rising tide rises all ships. Be the tide. Right? Stop being the one that's got to be right and um, while well, somebody else is wrong. That's not leadership. That's why politicians are not leaders. They thrive on others being wrong so that they can be right. They're not uniters. They can't accept that we can have differences and still act as one. Entrepreneurs see the world a little differently. Remember, there's three candidates out there. The third one being you. That's the one that deserves the focus and the attention right now. That's the one that can change anything and everything. The other two candidates? They're going to be stalemated for regardless of who, who wins this election for a long time to come. So the fifth one goes along with the fourth one, but it's on a bigger spectrum, right? Now the fourth one being raise individuals up. Check what you're doing. Make sure your actions, your words, are in compliance with bettering people's lives. Are people happy to hear what you have to say? Are you harming 50% of the people that you're talking to? Are you condemning 50% because they have different viewpoints than you? You say, well, Pat, but it's, it's the way it is. That's fine. And if that's the way you want to roll, that's fine too. I would say, why not connect with them all when you can? And that goes on to the fifth one. Okay? Fourth one is raising people. Fifth one, making this world, the one we live in right now, the one that's going to be shared by many generations to come, including our kids and our grandkids, making this world a better place by our words, by our actions, by our decisions, by our thoughts. Can you step above the politics of today and focus on making this world a better place? See, we're going to have some great division coming out of this next election that I'm guessing maybe comes to a conclusion tomorrow. Maybe not. But the division is going to get deeper. It's not going to get shallower. We're not going to all of a sudden wake up and be one happy family. No, it's going to take a lot of hard work. And few, in my humble opinion, few have the guts to do the hard work. Like, well, not my problem, not my issue. I didn't cause all this. After all, I didn't vote for them or whatever it may be. And I'm suggesting to you 
So we take this on. That we become the uniters. Start with our little sphere of influence, whatever it may be. Might be just at your coffee shop. Might be at your kid's t-ball game. Might be in your church. Right? Wherever it may be. Stand up. Bring a message to the table. Act in a way that's congruent with your message, not in a form of hypocrisy. Be open to what other people think and say and why they say it. Share your why. Let people know we can disagree. We can disagree and get along. We can disagree and get along. That's a message that seems to be lost right now. As a matter of fact, we're being told just the opposite. As a matter of fact, we're not only supposed to not get along, pretty sure they want us to hate each other. And that don't happen in my space. Doesn't happen. Even people who reach out to me, right, and attack me because of my thoughts and my views, still don't hate them. I'm totally okay with them the way they think. Because I'd be out of integrity to disallow someone to think the way they think. If I want you to be open to the way I think. Starting to see how this comes together? And you and I as leaders got to go first. While your business is to grow, you want to attract people to you, good people to you, Start being the lighthouse. You know what the lighthouse does different than a tugboat? Tugboats rush out. They compete with other tugboats to go out and find the broken down boats out there and tow them in the sea or tow them in a port. Not even broken down, but the ones that need proper navigational guidance coming into port. And they chase everything they can. Right? A lighthouse holds its ground. It's crystal clear what it represents, what it stands for. It shines bright over every boat, all of them, and it attracts into port to the lighthouse the ones that are looking for the lighthouse's message. That's it. They're not out there running anybody down, screaming at them, honking at them. No. It just stands tall, stands proud, it's crystal clear in its message. There is no hypocrisy in what it stands for. It does what it says. I shine a bright light, I'll shine, I'll show you guidance into the port. That's what it does. Whether you take its guidance or don't take its guidance, there's no judgment passed. It just shines. I'd suggest to you guys, right, be the lighthouse. We need leaders. In my humble opinion, tomorrow it's not going to be over. It's going to get a little more chaotic where it settles out, whatever the outcome be, right? It's a great opportunity for you and I to, to step up and shine as everyone else is running and blaming, and pointing fingers, spewing hatred. And yes, people are spewing hatred right now. You know what hate does? Attracts more hate. You know what love does? Attracts more love. Which would you prefer? More hate be brought into your life, more love be brought into your life. Think about that one. When you're in a place of resistance where everything you do seems to be getting met head on with some form of resistance, that is the time you stop and you pull out the freaking mirror and see what's going on because it's generally reflective of something you're putting out and getting back in its identical form. And you're getting back something you do not want because you're putting out something that you shouldn't be putting out. Maybe it's time for a little introspective look there. Doesn't make you a bad person. Doesn't make me a bad person. We've all been there and done that, right? It's not right or wrong. It's just a matter of if there's a better choice to serve you. Do you want the better choice? Do you want to take the high ground here? Not have to be right, but no, in the long run, by putting out the right message, you'll get back exactly what you're looking for. It's just a choice. And I'll end it on this, on that choice, right? That whatever your choice may be, you may look at this, these five little tips here, 
and throw them aside. Fully respect that. They decide, you know, Pat, this message resonates with me. I want more than the crap that's going on out there. And I'm willing to go first. Awesome. Totally honor both decisions. But you appreciate the fact that whatever you decide, however you approach tomorrow and beyond, right, you will get back exactly what you deserve as your decisions determine what you receive in this world. You can receive anything you want at whatever level you want. Just remember that, okay? There's no right or wrong. It's only what serves you and what doesn't serve you. That's it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you listening to that. I know it's a little off page for what we normally do, okay? But I'll be honest with you, I'm a little concerned with how much ugliness is going on right now. I see it all around me, and, and it, it hurts me to my core. I can't even express it. I don't want to go there right now, quite honestly, right? Gets me to my core because we're better than this. We're bigger than this. And we're letting those other people take us all out. We're letting them dictate us like we're little puppets on strings. Right? And we're falling prey to this BS. Good people finding deep in their soul this feeling of hate towards others. Good people. Because they're being played. If you like the message, it resonates with you guys and gals, share it, right? Let's start getting a little ripple effect. Don't force it upon anybody. It's not right or wrong. It's just an alternative, right? It's just another way to look at this world. Rafat says, bad vibes giving us shivers. Yeah, yeah I don't, not my way, and not willing to accept. And this is where sometimes, you know, you just got to choose to raise your standards of what you put out, what you accept, right? And what you accept usually is predicated on what you expect. Expect more, accept more. Expect down here, you ain't gonna accept much above that. You guys are awesome, man. Appreciate you being patient with getting on the call and appreciate you being patient with the message. Peace, you have an awesome day. Oh, I'll be here Wednesday, by the way, <laughs> uh, in lieu of Justin. So I don't know what we're gonna talk about yet, but I'll bring you something exciting on Wednesday, too. See you guys on Wednesday. Peace.